The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy first trading day of 2022. Kicking things off 9.06 a.m. We got about 23 minutes till the start of trading and we have markets in positive territory. But giving back some of the gains that we had this morning on a five minute basis, you see the action in the S&P's highs made at about 7 a.m. of 40. 790. You're talking about almost 30 points, just over 30 points higher on the futures at that time. Since then, though, we've given back some of those gains. You see the action. We're down to pre-market basically lows of 47.72, right where we opened last night, Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You see the sell-off that we got towards the end of the trading day of 2021 in the S&Ps. Right back to that level, we kick things off as if it was basically 3.45 p.m. Eastern time on Friday in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. The market just in the last hour and a half, really in the last 35 minutes, a little bit of negative action right now, all things considered. You know, these bars we're talking about really only about 40 points off of where we were trading at coming into 9 a.m. Right now, the NASDAQ 100 is up 60 points. The Dow's up 90 points, 36,340. In the Russell is up by six. Crude, giving back some of the gains as well. Crude was up to seventy-six dollars and change this morning, just at six a.m. If you woke up, I was up at six a.m. Uh, fast forward three hours, and you're trading with a seventy-four handle to seventy-four sixty-eight. You jump over to gold, negative action in gold as well, from eighteen thirty-three last night down to eighteen oh seven. We're trading at eighteen oh nine. You jump to silver down fifty-nine cents. Quite a sell-off on silver, right? Right back to basically where we're at. Pretty close to the lows of last week when you look at the action, only about 16 cents away from 2260. And notes and bonds, we are getting some action to kick things off this morning, folks. Lower price, higher yield. We kick into 22, uh, 2022. I'll get it out there. I'll get used to it. We're supposed to have three rate hikes this year. We're supposed to have three rate hikes next year. And with that, we have the tenure up eight basis points. We're a third of the way into a quarter basis point, excuse me, into a quarter point, a third of the way to a quarter point, as in up eight basis points. We're up 1.58% on the 10-year. We came into today at almost about 1.5%. So just like that, we took up eight basis points. You have the 10-year down 21 ticks to kick things off the 30-year down a full point and 18 ticks, actually below where we were last Wednesday. The 10-year right now, well below anything what we were talking about last Wednesday at 129.25. We take a look at the daily, quite a red bar we got breaking. You're now just basically below anything else besides that one trading day. And that day, recall, was the Friday after Thanksgiving where you accelerated higher, when you're in the market cascading lower on Omicron fears first appearing in the market. You have the market price-wise in the 10-year accelerating higher as that pulled back growth. Um, estimates, you could say. Nonetheless, we're right back down, and the only thing standing in our way is that one bar. Uh, pretty remarkable action in the bonds. No, it's considering the context of three rate hikes this year, three rate hikes next year. Yes, we have some market action going on right now, but boy, we definitely have some market action in the bonds and the notes to kick off the trading year. S&P's up by 17. We jump to one of the most talked about stocks out there and talk about kicking things off with the bank tesla shares you're going to open up almost 100 dollars at 11.42 right now we got a bid to show you where 11.42 is on this chart let's zoom in on the action i'm even going to take this uh before i take this off okay check out the fibonacci's always be aware of those 618s almost makes it right back down to that 618 closes the gap it had from october 22nd takes off from a price level of 886 and you're going to be talking about adding 30%. Tesla's going to gain 30% from where it was trading December 21st. Remarkable, right? But you catch the pop at the right time, 618, almost there, down to a price level of 886. Now, this morning, you're going to open at 1140, we'll call it. 1140 on this chart, bumping pretty close up to the highs we had December 1st, 
November 22nd, and also back around November 9th, all-time highs 1243. That, Tesla having to do with some pretty uh, awesome numbers for deliveries. They start off the year with a record uh, after blowout deliveries. That number, 300 and something, where are we? Come on, 308,600 vehicles delivered worldwide in the fourth quarter, well ahead of the estimate of 263, topping the company's previous record of 241. It's pretty nice when they're beating the growth estimates that the market has. Continues to execute well, posting deliveries and production above consensus expectations. That's a Cohen analyst, Jeffrey Osborne, as the competition heats up from incumbent, um, what is that, electric manufacturers, new entrants alike, 2022 critical year for Tesla. They kick things off in the right direction. Monday's jump followed what was a choppy final three months of the year for Tesla investors. 44% jump in October. Yeah. Market cap after one trillion, they're talking about Tesla. They kick things off today, man. You're talking about eighty bucks. You're talking about eleven forty-two. We're within about a hundred bucks of the all-time highs, and you're going to be right up, as I said, against these three highs. Quite a, a kickoff to the year for Tesla. Let's look how the big Fang stocks are going to kick things off. Apple shares going to open basically unchanged, barely positive. The number that's been on the radar for Apple one eighty-two eighty-six. That puts it at three trillion dollars. We jump to Google. Maybe one of the best performing FANG stocks of 2022. Google going to kick things off unchanged as well. Microsoft shares quite a banger up year in 2021 as well. Yeah, all the FANG stocks pretty unchanged right now. Microsoft, let's jump over to Amazon shares. After the holiday season wraps up, Amazon's up about 10 to 15 bucks right now. Amazon been a little bit of a lagger, definitely a laggard for 2021. You jump over to social media. I've been talking about Meta a lot, Facebook shares. Uh, 338 from 336. Got the Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas. Pretty solid experience, uh, especially for 300 or $400, considering what game consoles go for these days. And you add on the fact you don't even need a TV to get it done as well. Not a fan of Facebook, the company. Hopefully they get some regulations if they're going to be controlling all this data. But VR, the future, it is coming. The only question as a shareholder or maybe a trader of Facebook is what's it going to cost to get it done? And you could probably spend unlimited funds to try and enhance the technology around virtual reality feeling like human interactions. And I imagine that's going to be a quest that we're after almost forever. So that's a scary thought when you think about how much money you can ply, plow into technology and development. If you're trying to literally create a world environment akin to living in real life. It seems like an endless pit of money could be poured into the technology of that experience. Facebook wants to be on the forefront. They seem like they're well positioned to be so. You're going to have Apple in there with a the VR headset as well. Can't imagine some of the other tech companies doking into that game, maybe Google, etc. But nonetheless, kind of exciting going down the line. Apple, of course, they're talking about self-driving cars coming in a few years as well. That part of the uh, acceleration this company has had when you think about where it was October 6th final quarter of the year Apple gains $40 in share price in the final three months there's a lot of expectations coming into 2022 with the market putting up a 20 percent 27 excuse me no what was it It was like 28 percent maybe it was 27 percent the S&P had a market gain coming into the final trading day or two uh, quite a banner year in light of where the market's been the last 12 years coming into that all right, folks, stay tuned. We come back after the break. We got the S&Ps up 18 points right now. NASDAQ up 65. Dow up 115 points, flirting with record territories to kick off the trading year. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years of experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got about 11 minutes to go until the start of trading for 2022. Markets kicking things off in the green. S&P's up 19 points right now, trading at 47.77. We jump over to Nike shares. Nike shares trading from a close last year, close last year of 166.67. We're going to open the trading year up about a dollar for Nike. So Nike, Nike gets named by Guggenheim. I'll get you the headline there. Uh, it's best idea for 2022, citing Metaverse. Ironic, right? Metaverse is everywhere. I'm telling you, it's not. It's ironic that I get that uh, Quest 2 for the holidays, and it seems like I'm seeing now. Facebook changed their name, obviously, but this is Nike, and you see how it is already penetrating what's going on here in terms of companies and the Metaverse, and how that will play out as people spend more time, more money on a digital platform, digital real real estate, digital existence, almost. Guggenheim analyst said Nike's already dominant market share should continue to grow as it keeps scaling online. I mean, one of the reasons for their success has been their online performance themselves with direct-to-consumer or just online sales as it innovates with new footwear, the apparel products in the new year. Near term, Nike's been hurt by global supply chain disruptions, but the company should still be able to hit the financial targets it laid out last June. And it also said it will be watching Nike's engagement in the metaverse closely in 2022. The retailer bought virtual sneaker company RTFKT, Maybe, maybe that's pronounced. Not familiar for an undisclosed amount in December, uh, but they're getting into that business. Uh, undisclosed amount. Let's see, they were up 18% last year. Yeah, December 14th. They make NFT collectibles and memes. Another step that accelerates Nike's digital transformation. Pretty amazing, right? That you have a sneaker company like that. Nike, they're going to open up the year a, th a dollar higher. And quite a couple of years they've put together, man. You're talking about going from 2020 from 100 to finishing the year at 166.67. So you got a 67, two, you know, you basically put a 67% return over two years for 2020, 2021. Uh, not a bad combination indeed, but pretty encouraging when you look at that number. It's pretty remarkable, right? Digital real estate. I mean, Nike buying non-fungible token makers and somehow that's that's the and Guggenheim's like, we love this idea. It's a brave new world, folks. That's why I'm trying to wrap my head around the metaverse and Facebook. And maybe Facebook is in the play. Right. That's that's it's it's just wrapping your head around the technology and how it may change things. So one thing I will say, 
as I continue to try and find time with kids in the house and a son that turned 11 months yesterday. So time is precious and work and family life and getting outside. Um, but trying to experience that gift that I got for Christmas occasionally is that the policy they have for games is pretty awesome because you don't go to the store and buy games. You go into the online store within the Facebook Metaverse Oculus 2 store, just like an app store in Apple, uh, and you pay for the game. And the, the refund policy is if you request a refund within 14 days of purchasing the game and you have played for less than two hours. I've talked about it before, but it's a pretty cool refund policy. I've bought three games so far and I've requested a refund for two of them. And it's pretty cool because it actually encourages you to try more games. Now, I think about that from an economic standpoint, right? Who does this help? Well, that should reward the best game makers because instead of just buying a game that's built on the promotion of that game, right? Because you can promote a game all you want. But if I buy it and I play it for 90 minutes and I tell myself, you know what? This ain't that great. And I request a refund. I'm getting my money back versus I have the ability to try any game I want, which is going to encourage consumers should encourage them to try many, many games. And it's also going to reward consumer uh, producers, right? that do the best job describing the game, informing you how to play the game, and making sure that your experience for the first hour or two is what matters the most, because that's when you have the ability to request a refund. Uh, I pulled up one game, for instance. It was a baseball game, a sports game. I had no idea how to pitch. They put you on, I, I was like, okay, I wanna play a game. They make me the team on the field first, okay? So I'm pitching, I'm pitching. Bottom line is the first inning, I let up 11 runs. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't figure it out. Turns out I was just pitching it right down the pipe, right down the center every single time. You got to move the ball around, as is the case. You have to figure out how to play a game. Most people are impatient. They just got the gift for their Christmas. They want to start playing a the game. They want to experience it. I pulled it up. Point being, I didn't like the game at all. I didn't know how to play it. They should have done a better job of informing you how to play that game before they even let you play that game. It's going to reward people that onboard customers in the most efficient way possible, informing them how to play the game and that they're the best developers out there. It's a pretty cool experience. Maybe you uh, choose VR company game developments. If the best companies out there are producing the best stuff, consumers are going to get to vote with their dollars and request refunds when they want. Maybe that's going to help good programming companies, bottom line, which should help the market. That's the whole point of a free market, right? You reward good programmers, more good programs get produced. Either way, Facebook going to open up almost $2 to kick things off. There's your five-minute action on Facebook. A little bit of a sell-off to end the year last year, down to 336. We kick off the trading year at 338 on Facebook shares. We jump over to social media. Snapchat going to open higher as well, up to about 47.50. We jump over to Twitter shares, opening at about 43.52. Now let's jump over to the banks. One of the things people talked about, 2022, banks could be a good area if we're getting three rate hikes. Rates should be going up. And it didn't take long, as we talked about. Rates definitely going up today, and the banks are seeing it happen. JP Morgan, you're talking about a buck sixty, nah, buck forty, yeah, buck forty to buck sixty. Bid ask, you're going to open at one fifty nine seventy five. You close at one fifty eight thirty five. That's going to be a nice acceleration to kick off the year. Bank of America, you're going to open fifty cents higher. That's a one percent return on the bank. Uh, as the trading day begins this morning, Bank of America. Let's jump to Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo up a dollar for a forty-eight dollar stock. You're talking about a two percent pop for Wells Fargo shares to kick things off on the open this morning. We jump over to airlines. They are even going to open higher this morning. American up about eleven to twenty cents. Maybe it's like a max pain situation. Delta going to open max. Uh, excuse me, a little bit higher by about forty cents. Um, we jump over to United. We're going to open a little bit domestically. JetBlue shares pretty flat. Southwest shares. Pretty flat as well. Interesting. I mean, all the conversations. I was fortunate not to have to travel during the holiday season. Would love to see my family up in the Northeast in Boston. Plan on doing it relatively soon when I can. But, man, the horror stories coming out of those flight cancellations going on and during the holiday season, that's just rough. You know holiday plans getting canceled out, etc. All right. Let's jump around to what else we have going on as we got four minutes and 17 seconds to be exact until the year starts trading. Uh what did I have pulled up here? Here we go. In terms of what we have happening. So we get, uh, yeah, on Wednesday, we're going to get Fed minutes released from the December meeting. 
Uh, we then get ADP's December report also out Wednesday. We get initial jobless claims Thursday, as always, and then the big one coming up, we get the job report non-farm payrolls for the month of December on Friday morning. So ADP on Wednesday, non-farm payrolls on Friday. We also get Wednesday the Fed minutes from December, which will be interesting because they're talking about hiking rates three times this year. Seems like that's going to get some attention on those minutes. We'll see what that does to the market. So that is Wednesday as well. So we kick things off with some news right out of the gate in a big way. Uh, and notes and bonds may be getting a little bit ahead of the potential action that you may see from those Fed minutes on Wednesday with the 10-year. We might get 1.6%. We might get it by the time we're off the air, folks. Uh, my program even off the air before Basil Chapman coming up at 10. The 10-year is trading at 1.588%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the start of trading. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have trading has begun for the beginning of 2022 and all the markets kicking things off with higher prices. S&P's up by 16. Fang stocks, NASDAQ 100 up by 90. Dow up by 78 right now. And the Russell kicking things off up 17 points. Check out that pop. We just got, look at that action on the Russell right there on the open. We trade from 2244 up to 2260 right now. Positive prices. Crude trading just under $75. Crude, as I mentioned earlier, was up above 76 early today, bouncing a bit back to the $75 price point or that or thereabouts. 
Gold, though, trading lower. Look at that drop off on gold. Tough one there. Down to 1807 from 1827 just at about 6 a.m. this morning. But the story could be notes and bonds right now. We're talking about notes and bonds to pull it up again to be exact. 1.59% right on the dot right now. The 10-year easily coming into 1.6% as we kick off the year. You're talking about getting a tenth of a percentage point on the 10-year by 9.32 a.m. Monday, January 3rd for the trading year. You want to talk about the potential for movement in rates. That is quite a start to the year. Uh, and as we're kicking things off. Things gaining a little bit of steam. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon kicks things off, up about six tenths percent right now. Apple shares, up about seven tenths. Look at this pop on the open. Apple just traded up a dollar on the open. Apple just added market cap of 16 to 20 billion dollars. Always blows my mind. 16.4 billion shares outstanding, I believe, for company Apple. Microsoft shares up about a quarter percent. They're catching a bid on the open as well. Google shares. Kicking off 2022, up about four tenths percent. Let's see how Tesla's reacting on the news of their deliveries. Up about eight percent, holding on to most of those gains at 11.39 this morning. Um, and let's see how the banks are trading on the open as well. J.P. Morgan up a full percent right now. Bank of America also look at that. Bank of America up 1.7 percent. Yeah, Wells Fargo up 2.2 percent. Big numbers. The airlines up 1.8 percent. You would not think that would be the case, but I guess they've uh, mustered the worst potentially of Omicron. It is what it is. And the investors looking forward past the problems they're having. Americans up 1.6 percent. Not sure how else you look forward to the numbers of the airlines being up more than a percent. Delta up 1.6 as I went over United up 2.1 percent. Let's check out some of the other travel stocks. Airbnb actually a little bit lower. Uh, we jump over to Uber. We have some Uber in my newsletter. Rocket Equity is an option. It's always a little bit more volatile than the market up 1.4 we jump over to Disney shares, kicking off the year up six tenths percent right now over in retail. Let's see how they're reacting. Walmart down about three tenths percent right now. Target shares flat to kick off the year. Uh, TJX, X, TJ Maxx opening the year basically flat. We jump to the home bill, um, home repair lows up about half a percent to kick off the year. Home Depot shares basically flat after some banner years. Let's jump to the shipping companies real quick. FedEx shares up a percent to kick things off over the holidays. UPS shares opening up one tenth percent right now on the positive. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on in terms of specific stocks. McDonald's upgraded to an overweight from neutral. Piper Sandler points to the restaurant chain's ability to deliver on increasing preferences for drive through and elevated demand for chicken and hamburger offerings. The basics, right? Isn't that the basics? Basics. Uh, McDonald's. We do have some McDonald's in my newsletter, folks. Rocket equities and options. You were higher. You trade back lower. Basically in line with the market. McDonald's up about six tenths percent this morning. Uh, Neo. Higher this morning after China-based electric vehicle maker reported December deliveries 10,000. Uh, Facebook. Tesla just reported 300,000, but that's quite an increase for them. So they were higher. Let's see if they hang on to it. Neo. They sure are up about 3.3% on that news. We got another auto company. PayPal gained 1.9% in the pre-market following an upgrade to outperform from market perform based on the payment services current valuation. Uh, Wells Fargo. Barclays upgraded Wells Fargo, just going over because banks to overweight from equal weight. So that's why Wells Fargo is up like 2.1, 2.2% versus the other banks up about 1.5%. Barclays expects banks to outperform the market in 2022. Net interest margins improve off historic lows. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Uh, we already went over the banks trading higher. Let's pull up PayPal, P-A-P-Y-P-L is their symbol. Yeah, PayPal up 1.6% on that number as well. And all these markets drifting even higher. We got the S&Ps now catching a bid around that open. S&Ps up 21 points, almost half a percent to kick things off. AMD, <coughs> excuse me, one of several semiconductor stocks picked as top picks at Goldman. Semiconductors potentially having a big year. AMDs among the companies will see continued strength as sector outperformance becomes more muted in 2022. They rose 1.2%. We'll jump over top picks Marvel Technology and Micron. So AMD, Marvel, and Micron. Let's see how they're trading this morning. AMD shares opening. There's a pop for you on the open, up 2.7% on the open. Marvel shares getting a pop on the open, up 1.3, 1 1.8%, excuse me. And Micron shares, MU is their symbol, up 2.4% on the open. Let's jump over to Intel shares, see how they're trading this morning. Quite a start to the year across the board for the stocks that put in a lot of effort in 2021 for higher prices. Intel up 1.5% to kick things off as well. All right, what else I have pulled up here in terms of action? 
Uh, yeah, let's jump over to this one. So Goldman calling out active fund managers over missed opportunities. Last year, not a good year for those active fund managers. Uh, stock investors should avoid companies with greater exposure to wage inflation. That would make sense, okay? Wage inflation, a very real thing going on right now. With margins, a key differential for 2022 for active fund managers missed out on per outperformance opportunities last year, according to Goldman. With economic growth slumping, many companies will see limited sales gains, so the ability for firms to navigate inflation and interest rates is going to be crucial. That's David Costin writing, writing in a note on Sunday. The strategist added that typical stop rock, stop stop. Typical stock returns were becoming less influenced by macro factors, okay? So less influenced by macro factors. That means that the macro influences hitting everybody are going to have less of an influence. That means there's going to be winning and losers throughout that. Last year, just 20% of large cap core mutual funds outperformed the S&P 500. The historical average is even just 32%. Only 15% of growth mutual funds outperformed their benchmark, Goldman added. Excuse me. Uh, value managers fared better, 56% outperforming. Uh, the average there, 41%. Strategists start 2022 with far less clarity in terms of central bank policy, as we were talking about there. Um, but something to think about, pretty remarkable when you look at one out of five, basically. Just one out of five is the number large cap core mutual funds, and then just really um, only 15% of growth mutual funds. It's tough to compete, folks, when you got Google, one of the biggest companies out there. How do you beat when you got a, <coughs> excuse me, a company like Google trading from 1750 to close out the year to 3000, carrying that fund higher? A company like Apple, the biggest company in the whole world, trading from a, company, a price of 126 to start the year to 180. Very difficult to beat some of those indices when you have the juggernauts out there that did it last year. Uh, we'll see if that carries forward to this year, though. You know, the real remarkable, not real, there's many remarkable things about this market acceleration as we come into this final break over the last 13 years. While well, pulling up a long-term chart of the S&P, all right, we have the double top in 2000. We get that top again in 2007. This is the S&P. You zoom in on the action from 2007. You trade down to a price point. In March of 2009, of 665.75 on the futures here. All right, and then you have traded up 13 years. You've only had one negative year. I believe it was 2018 potentially at minus 4% or something like that. One of the most remarkable things of this full run, though, is that when you start compounding the numbers you've had, you actually get some of the biggest compounded numbers at the end, last year being one of the biggest at 27%. So you would have traded from 665 to almost 5,000, as the numbers say. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 21 points right now. I got a chart of AT&T up here. AT&T up more than 2%. Check out that pop on the open. Uh, jumping over to Verizon, much more tame action, up about 3 tenths percent for Verizon. So the battle is on over here between AT&T, Verizon, and the airlines talking about 5G. Airlines warn of flight delays as AT&T and Verizon balk at the 5G delay. Wireless carriers rejected U.S. call to postpone the 5G rollout. The FAA and the DOT reviewing reply uh, and offer to delay the 5G near airports. So it seems like um, the basic battle is ALRs are saying that this new 5G service is on a wave similar to some of the waves that they use for flight control. That could cause some disruptions and delays. AT&T and Verizon saying that's not the case. Now they're saying, okay, let us go forward. And I believe the plan is just to hold it um, at some of those airlines was the, excuse me, uh, at specific airports. They would not build that out until they studied it a little bit further. Um, the two wireless companies on Sunday said the request from Transportation secretaries would be to the detriment of millions of mobile customers. The company said they might offer a six-month pause near some airports. Um, and they are considering a response Sunday, but airlines and regulators predicted substantial impacts on flight schedules. If there aren't some adjustments to the 5G service set to start January 5th, it is January 3rd. Uh, the Airlines for America trade group, using worst-case assumptions, said there could be as many as 350,000 commercial flights impacted per year at a cost of $2.1 billion. What are the odds that the airline trade group's worst-case scenario is a reality? Probably very small. Um, nonetheless, I have no idea what's going on. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out because 5G is the new technology. And one of the things that they are talking about here is that Verizon and AT&T are saying, listen, this is the technology of the future, 5G, whether you like it or not. If we don't do this now, you're going to have China rolling it out. They'll become the leader in 5G. That'll be the future, and the U.S. will fall behind. One of the things that will get talked about in this conversation as you see this proceed further um, it's unfortunate with all the conspiracy theories that go around 5G, um, et cetera. I imagine something like this only adds fuel to that fire, which is why we'll hear more about it in the coming future. Uh, and then you're going to see it play out right now because January 5th was a number. Verizon up a bit today. AT&T up decently 2% today as well. All right. Jumping around to what else we have going on. What I have pulled up. How about oil? Oil was higher when this was written. Um, that was last night. Oil climbs as Libyan output falls ahead of the OPEC supply meeting. Oil rose as Libyan supply tightened. And OPEC's got a meeting coming up tomorrow to discuss the production policy for February. Futures were higher. They dipped lower today. We're back at about $75. Uh, OPEC reduced its estimates of surplus in global oil markets this quarter, a day before the group and its allies considers another output boost. Uh, the findings may encourage the 23-nation OPEC Plus coalition to proceed with the modest production increase that's expected. Uh, so that hits the market, but you jump over to crude. 
And a little bit of a sell-off in the overnight from where we were. You know, 2 to 6 in the morning, you're trading at 75 to 80 to 76.20. And from there, you sold off to 74.40. But guess what? We get near the market open at 9.30 and crude back above $75 at 75.31 this morning. All right, let's jump around to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, quite a banner year in 2021. We opened the year technically up about $1,200 on the session. Tough finish out to the year when you look at Friday's action even, or even last week. Last week, you had a $52,000 handle on Bitcoin. You finish out the year at $45,695, putting this on a longer term time frame. All right, let's go back five years on a weekly. Quite the pullback. We just got back. You almost gave it all back from where we were in September. That price point was just at about $40,000. Seems to be a pretty pretty critical area 40,000 for bitcoin but you look at the weekly that was quite a tough week to end out last year and you look at it basically a bearish engulfing it engulfs the prior three weeks from where you were in bitcoin from a high to a low you close out at nearly the lows of the week and uh, we got a red bar forming so far in bitcoin to kick things off as well all right what else we have up here in terms of taking a look at talked about guggenheim stock market um yeah, and jumping back to some of those airlines, that's what I was kind of talking about. That was the article I had up here as well. And as we speak, the FDA expands the booster eligibility for Pfizer to kids age 12 till 15. We'll jump into Pfizer in a moment. But yeah, this morning, there's nothing more to say to that. Investors look past the airline's holiday flight cancellations. 13,000 is the number canceled from Christmas Eve through New Year's Day. 13,000. You think about the number of Im people impacted, right? Even if you're talking about 100 people, that would push it out to 1.3 million, as in 100 people per flight. Is that right? Yeah, that is. 100 people per flight is about 1.3 million people. Easily, you could be pushing 150 to 200 people. That would push the number up to 2 million to 2.5 million people sitting on canceled flights that have to be rebooked. I'm sure some of those people, as they're talking about the den, on multiple flights. Uh, but nonetheless, investors on Monday largely shrug it off and they trade higher. 1,700 U.S. flights on Monday on top of more than 5,400 over the weekend canceled, largely driven by severe winter weather that hobbled some of the country's busiest airports. Um, 250 flight cancellations set for Tuesday. So maybe 250 tomorrow, 5,400 over the weekend, 1,700 on Monday, hopefully wrapping up some of those cancellations. We jump over to the cruise ships. Speaking of travel, Carnival opening the year up in positive territory. Man, these cruise ships doesn't get much worse, I guess. Maybe that's the scenario. How much worse can you get? I don't think you're going to see the government make it illegal for cruise ships to, to do business again. We're probably far past that being the case that they had the right to do that. Definitely don't have the right to do it probably any longer. Um, maybe the government would. The president probably wouldn't have the ability just to make that or the CDC. So even with the declaration that you should avoid cruise ships, pretty interesting to see the market come to the quick realization that most Americans and probably most worldwide citizens had already been aware that if you're worried about COVID at all, cruise ships are not where you want to be right now. Uh, Carnival up 3.5% at 2084. You're coming up to the area that we had for lows back in July. We had a low 1919, so coming up above that area. But you can see how that could be an area of support that we bump into there. 2079, put it back on a short-term time frame for Carnival. Quite a nice pop to kick off the year, though, as you begin things. After quite a tough year, you could say, for cruises, when many thought maybe cruises by the end of 2021 would have some form of normalcy back. Not so much the case. Norwegian up 2.3% to kick things off along with Carnival shares trading higher as well. Let's jump over to the cannabis stock. Speaking of tough years in 2021, maybe none tougher than the cannabis stock sector in terms of starting things off with a, a banner year. Uh, Canopy runs up to 56.50 and ends the year last year under $9. Folks, the low for the COVID low was $9. If you had said to an investor in February, when Canopy was above $50, what are the odds we close out the year of 2021 uh, at a price of under last year's COVID low? I can't imagine the statistical probability you would have assign assigned that, but nonetheless, we traded lower. You are higher by 1%, but 10 cents is nothing on these equities right now. Uh, with cannabis actually trading 18 cents already off of the highs of the year as you were above nine bucks to kick things off. Let's jump over to Tilray. Tilray shares 
up less than 1%, but giving back some of the gains as well. What just happened to this market? What did we miss? Uh-oh. S&P's just dropped 30 points. You better pay attention. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. You want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got some fireworks to kick things off right now. You got the S&Ps flat after being up 20 points just about 10 minutes ago. After being up almost 40 points pre-market, you're flat like that. NASDAQ 100 actually negative. That with Apple up huge today. We'll get to it all. Moderna shares down 9%, potentially having to do with Pfizer expanding their ability to have their booster to kids. I'm not sure. 9% recalibrated on that. Uh, and the reason why that doesn't make really a ton of sense is because you get the whole healthcare sector maybe lower with Pfizer down almost 3.7 percent right we jump to Johnson and Johnson down only three tenths percent it's quite a different story when you look at those two uh, but Moderna shares man down nine percent when you look at that action now we talked about it look at the action on Apple on the open Apple's up 1.4 percent man we just traded to almost 181 from 178 on Apple the flip side of that Maybe they're dumping some Microsoft and buying Apple because Microsoft just traded down $8 and it's not stopping. Microsoft down 2% when you got Apple up 1.5%. You jump over to Google shares, down 3 tenths percent, no real action there. You jump over to Facebook shares, no real action, up half a percent. But you see the divergences. We jump over to Tesla shares, 
traded up to 1170 on the open. Right now, you're still up 9%. We jump over to some high flyers, low flyers for 2020, uh, excuse me, 2021, DocuSign, uh, excuse me, Zoom, giving it up down 3.5%. Looks to be maybe that Omicron, not as impactful. You got healthcare stocks trading lower. Uh, you got stay at home Zoom trading higher, lower. You have the airlines actually trading higher, even in the face of cancellations going on right now. Uh, DocuSign, lower as well. Hadn't even pulled that up yet. Down 2.6%. Let's see how the airlines, yeah, look at these airlines all get a bid. Yeah, this is a re, uh, it's a reopen trade going on with the airlines trading higher, uh, stay at home stocks trading lower, uh, healthcare stocks trading lower. Um, Hopefully that's the case. We need them less. Market opens back up. Everybody's traveling. Uh, and with that, we got the markets back in positive territory, folks. Two-way market to start things off just like we had to wrap up the end of 2021. Thanks so much for starting your trading year with me. Stay tuned, folks. We got live programming all day. Everybody back in the saddle. We got Basil at 10. We have Larry at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Monday, everybody.